So this is the UX functional update. It's a little bit late. Uh, it happened to fall on Memorial Day, so we moved it. Um, so it's a little bit out of order and you'll be seeing me probably uh, very, very soon because this one got moved so much further ahead. Um, but that's okay. Right? You can all hang out again pretty soon. So next slide, please. I have missed someone on the slide and I apologize profusely. Uh, I have missed Hazel who is one of our UX designers. I wanted to put out a list of all the UX team members. Uh, there's a lot of new people coming in and there's so many people to meet and know, um, just so you can kind of get familiar with the names of the different UX uh, team members. So Hazel Yang should be on here. She's fabulous, uh, based in Taipei, and I'll make sure that she's on there for next time. Next slide. All right, so coming up, improvements for 9.4. Next slide. We're making a lot of uh, merge request improvements uh, in 9.4. There's been a lot of uh, talk about some inconsistencies and some different areas that, uh, oh, does somebody have their microphone on? That's me, hold on, I'm trying to figure out how to be. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I think that's a little bit better. Maybe uh, Sid can mute me. I think Sid can mute me. Maybe I, can I mute you? Oh, are you the host? I, I believe I am. Okay, then you can mute me. I can mute you. This is a fun one, guys. I gotta say, this is a pretty good. <laughs> I'm gonna mute you, let's see. No, I can't. Hold on. So I'm gonna keep talking about merge request widget improvements. Um, so we have a meta issue for this. There's a lot of different issues that are tied to it. We're trying to take a holistic view so that we can make sure we're making uh, improvements that make sense for the entire uh, area rather than focusing in on just one or two little things. So here we've got some uh, improvements to making merge warnings easier to understand, easier to take action on, making sure that the spacing between items is consistent so that when you're viewing it, it's, it's a lot smoother, a lot more polished looking. Next slide. Uh, member roles per project. So in our user testing, it revealed that users had trouble knowing their project's membership, uh, who's the owner, master, developer, and they weren't able to quickly tell which projects they were a member of when exploring projects. So this just seeks to make that a little bit clearer by adding um, the little label next to it uh, in both the membership labels and project lists. Um, you can see whether you're a developer, owner, master, etc. Next slide. So new design approvals uh, settings in the merge request form, we updated the design so that you can set the number of approvers as well as adding and removing approvers. And that suggested approvers link is now gonna be right below the approvers search box. So it's a little bit easier to find. Next slide. So there's been a lot of talk about this one, trial and license purchases uh, inside of GitLab EE. This is part of making EE the default download. Uh, my disclaimer is that anything you see here is still a work in progress. So this flow may change, may be updated. Um, so don't take it as the single source of truth quite yet. Um, once installed, uh, users should be encountering EE features. If they don't have uh, the license for the EE feature, they get a summary of that feature and a call to action direct them to start a trial of EE. Uh, it's not permanent. We don't intend to nag users with something like this. If they indicate they don't want to do a trial, they're not interested in EE, these areas will simply be grayed out and they won't have uh, to be bothered with it again. But the, the purpose here is to make them aware of the features that we have that really can improve their workflow. Next slide. So when they do opt for the trial, they can do so without a credit card. So there's a simple form that allows them to log in uh, or sign up very quickly and then start get started with a trial without the hassle of having to put in a credit card and um, worry about whether or not they're gonna be charged for something, right? Next slide. Inside of the admin area, 
uh, under licenses, once the trial has been activated, they'll be able to check the status of the trial, buy a license, upload a new license in the admin area. Um, again, this is all kind of a work in progress, so this may change, but in general, this is uh, the road we're going down uh, design-wise. Next slide. Milestones. So we currently have no native notion of group milestones. Instead, when we create a group milestone, we're really creating multiple project milestones. And this uh, design aids to, aims to make this uh, a lot easier of a process. One would be a milestones dash, that's up at the top. Uh, the screen simply adds a message explaining which milestones are being shown. Uh, group milestones, this page combines group milestones and milestones from all projects in the group. We show all milestones in the same list, the simplest approach for first iteration. When assigning a milestone on an issue, we'll show the group, next, uh, group name next to group milestones. This way we can differentiate group and project milestones, uh, which belongs to the same scope as the issue. Next slide. So in this one, we actually, this is a merge request waiting to be uh, merged in. It is good to go. Uh, here, uh, we've removed the duplication for sharing projects with groups inside project settings. You can see the before and after. There was just simply a duplication in there that wasn't necessary and made the page a lot longer than it needed to be. Next slide. And then we have a ton of UI polish issues that we're working on. Uh, here are just three of them. Um, the fourth is listed, but there wasn't really a way to, to visualize that one. So one of the things we're working on uh, is improving the line length inside of GitLab. So making sure that uh, areas of text are easy to read, they're not excessively long, um, and that they don't make the page longer than they need to be. Another is making the hover, focus, and active states consistent. Uh, and the icon for the dropdowns should also be consistent. And then making search consistent, uh, a consistent experience across all of GitLab. As you can see in this uh, little GIF we have here, there's actually three different types of searches right now. So we're looking for a way to combine those together and make it uh, an expected experience. So next slide. So I do something a little bit different here. Uh, I'm gonna let Dimitri take over and go through this next section of unscheduled UX issues already currently in progress. And then I will wrap it up at the end with those items that are UX ready. Take it away, Dimitri. All right, thank you, Sarah. Uh, yeah, hi, welcome to the UX functional update. I'm gonna cover um, the part of unscheduled UX issues. They are uh, a work in progress, I'd say. Not all will go in there or in full capacity. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? So here we are at the navigation, and the navigation is a pretty uh, pretty big concept that's uh, being worked on. Um, I have to note here that these screenshots are grayscale. They're just as intended for design purposes for exploration. They will, will not be final as, uh, for what is going in. Um, the purpose, what we're going to do with the navigation is getting a clear distinction between contextual and global navigation. And within this mockup or screenshot, you can easily see in the black navigation, the global navigation. This will be visible in each view. And you'll be easily, uh, easily be able to go to different dashboards, such as the projects, uh, dashboard to groups or activity. And um, the final end of this is to be able to be, um, to make it easier for users to know where they are in the application. And to extend it on, upon that, I would love to go to the next slide to see the contextual navigation. And the contextual navigation is once again a move back to the sidebar. And it's again an, an, another clear distinction between global and contextual navigation. Um, it will have both functionality of uh, when hovering over an element to see which sub elements will be visible under that uh, under that element, so to say. So if you go to issues, currently it is quite a big problem to go to, for example, the issue board. You have first have to go to issues, it will open up the list, and only then you can select the board. This will try to improve that and in the, in the process, uh, improve the um, coherence of the application. So knowing where you are. Next slide, please. 
Um, in the top, at the top mockup, you can see the um, the breadcrumbs in the application. You have global breadcrumbs, you have contextual breadcrumbs. They will be displayed under each other. Um, they will move towards the content area, which means they will be scrollable with the content. So they will not always be in view, but they will be there when you open up a new view to make you aware where exactly you, you are again. Um, let's see, next slide, please. So this is the merge request um, view. This is gonna be, this is purely an exploration, by the way. Um, this intends to make it less crowded, to make it easier to digest which view you're looking at, to, easier, to make it easier to skip to the content you want to read. For example, you may open a merge request view and only want to skip immediately to the changes to see the diff of the actual merge request you're trying to get merged or you're trying to review. Um, some other changes in here are um, the merge request widget, which is a, a famous UI element in this view which has been changed to a tab. This is purely an exploration for now. This needs some more discussion, but there we're looking for ways to improve how efficient a person can be on this page. Next slide, please. So this is when a user sets up a new instance um, and they are agreed with, okay, you are going to be the root user of the GitLab uh, instance you were created. Um, we want to have that be improved and um, let's see and if you're a registered user there will be a different view but this is to improve the onboarding experience so to say make note that if i have any mistakes sarah will improve uh, will correct me of course <laughs> next slide please um, lastly for the uh, improvements or work in progress section of this functional group update is the project importing from GitLab.com to your own GitLab instance. So say you start out on GitLab.com, eventually you say like, okay, my, my business is growing, growing quite rapidly, I'm going to need my own GitLab instance. Um, this is for you. And you will be able to more easily import projects from GitLab.com towards your own instance. Um, clicking on the link will open up a new tab and won't change your contextual view, so to say, which is, quite important to not break the user flow. Um, and on to the next slide, I'm gonna give it over to Sarah again. Awesome, thanks Dimitri, really appreciate that. Uh, in the future, I'm actually hoping to have uh, UX designers rotate and each do one section, um, just to uh, get a little bit of a different voice and a little bit different perspective on things as we move through. So UX improvements ready for implementation. Uh, next slide, please. So these are all issues that are sitting out there. UX is ready. It's just waiting on some nice, kind person to work on it and put it into GitLab. So the first one is highlight all matching substrings in autocomplete dropdown. So that is a mouthful. Um, so right now, when you mention a user, the dropdown pops up to help you, but it only uh, highlights the user handles. It doesn't uh, also highlight their full names. So we want it to match uh, all the, it highlight all the matches within those substrings right so that it's easier to quickly find the one that you're looking for next slide so displaying time tracking totals on the milestones page i want to show the aggregated values for the time spent time estimated time remaining uh, that way you can assess the milestones progress based on the open closed issues and time tracking is possible by looking at the issue counts progress bar and time tracking stats Next slide. Confirmation dialogues. So this are actually two related issues uh, to improve our confirmation dialogues. Um, the overall appearance, the messages that they display, as well as the actions you can take, making it very clear that when you're deleting something or removing something, that that is an action uh, that you won't be able to undo. Next slide. And then resolvability of discussions and issues. So when creating a discussion, uh, you can optionally indicate right now that it's resolvable. When you resolve the discussion, you truly resolve the entire thing. There's not a concept within this of individual comment resolvability. Um, it applies to issues, merge requests, non-diff commits, snippets. 
Uh, if a single root comment has no replies, it'll still show the reply panel so a user can easily, re easily reply, jump in, uh, et cetera. So now I'm gonna open it up to questions. Next slide. Let me take a look at the chat. No questions, anybody, anybody? Curious about anything? All right, there's one more slide and feel free to jump in with a question if you think of one. I wanna give some shout outs. I saw that Lee did this and I was jealous. So I went ahead and put together my own shout out slide. Um, and for next time, I'm gonna to have to put a shout out to Jacob for saving my butt in this functional uh, group update because otherwise I wouldn't have had all my speaker notes. <laughs> um, but we've got a lot of people out there working to help us uh, implement these new designs. So just some people that we've recognized lately have been doing a lot of great work uh, helping us. Annabelle, uh, improving table issues. Uh, M. Greeling, I'm gonna say Mike, because I don't know everyone's name right now. Um, started working on improving our settings. And Philippa went through all the UI polish to make sure that we had uh, everything in there that we needed to get those out in the next release, which is a huge effort. Um, and the product team, I don't know how much shout out they usually get, but I wanna say a huge thank you. Uh, they've been fabulous about getting together with us to talk about how we can work better as a team to get, uh, get things moving faster for UX so we can get a little bit ahead. Um, and Philippa says it was a team effort. Shout out for Tim and Clement. Yes, absolutely. Um, I will make sure that we, uh, we highlight them next time. So if there's no questions, I'm gonna say that this is it. I promise next time I'll be uh, ready with an extra screen so I'll have my speaker notes. Um, and I just wanna say thanks to everybody for attending. Have a great Friday. Bye-bye.